Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In this tutorial, you are going to learn how to create a custom behavior for any view inside a coordinator layout. We will code it in Kotlin and it's going to look like this. When you click on the Fab button, it's not going to move upwards, but it's rather going to shrink. You can also make it rotate or do something completely special and also it doesn't need to be a fab, it can be a normal button or for example a text view. The only important thing is that it needs to be a child of a coordinator layout. So without any further ado, let's get right to it. We're gonna create a new application behavior dot. Make sure to include Kotlin support here. Select basic activity because we want to have the floating action button already created. And finally finish. And here we are, we can close this content main XML and open app, res, layout and we want to go to activity main XML and we already have a floating action button here and we are gonna modify it later. When we go to main activity, we can see that we already create a snag bar when the fab is clicked. That's perfect and we don't need to do anything else here, so we are gonna leave main activity as it is. What we want to do is open Java folder, then the first package, and we want to create a new Kotlin class, shrink behavior, and select class here. This class needs to have a primary constructor, and it's going to accept a context and also an attribute set. And shrink behavior will inherit from coordinator layout dot behavior, and we will do it for any view, so the generic parameter will be just view. And we want to pass context and attribute set for the constructor of the base class. All right, now inside this class, we want to override a function. Its name is layout depends on. And inside, we want to return the Boolean value of dependency is snagbar.snagbar layout. And why are we doing this? Well, by returning true when the dependency is a snagbar, we tell the Android operating system that it should call on dependent view changed function whenever the position of the snagbar changes. On dependent view change is another function which we are going to override. All right, so this function will be called whenever the snagbar's position is changed. As a first thing, we want to do a basic null check. So if parent is null, or child is null, or even when the dependency is null, we want to simply return false from this function. Then we want to get the distance between the bottom of the screen and the top of the snack bar. We're going to create an immutable variable, distance y, and we are going to get it from a function which we are going to create right now. So let's create a private fun, get view offset for snack bar. It's going to have two parameters, parent, which is coordinator layout, and also view, of type view. This function will return float and inside we want to create a var max offset which by default it's gonna be set to zero. Then we want to get dependencies and we will get them by calling parent dot get dependencies for the view which is passed into this function. So here we are basically getting all dependencies that is all views which returned true in this function layout depends on. Now for each dependency, so dependencies dot for each and for each dependency, there will likely be only one dependency, the snack bar, but we need to make sure that our code works flawlessly each time. So for each dependency, if dependency is snack bar dot snack bar layout and parent do views overlap for the view and the dependency return true. And there is just one line of code which I will write here, but it's pretty complex, so I will explain it after I write it. That line goes as follows, max offset is equal to math.max, and we want to know if the maximum value is the already set max offset, or parentheses dependency.translation y, minus dependency.height, this difference will be negative and we want it to be positive, so we are going to multiply it by minus 1. And now what are we actually doing here? Snack bar layout is initially hidden, which means that its Y translation is the same as its height. In Android, Y coordinate values grow downwards and translation is measured at the top of the view. By subtracting the height from the translation and multiplying this difference by minus one, we get a value of the offset for the top of the snack bar from the bottom of the screen. Also, we check if views do overlap, because if the views aren't overlapping, there is no point in shrinking the floating action button. Alright, now we can set this distance y to be equal to get view offset for snack bar. The parent is parent, 
and the view for this function is child. Now we want to get a number between 0 and 1 for how much of the translation is actually done. So val fraction complete is equal to distance y divided by dependency dot height. So when the distance of the snack bar from the bottom of the screen is the maximally possible, the fraction complete will be equal to 1. And when this happens, we want the view with this behavior to be completely hidden. For that, we are going to create a scale factor, which will be equal to 1 minus fraction complete. Now we want to set child.scaleX to be equal to scale factor. And also child.scale Y is going to be equal to the same scale factor. And then we want to return true from this function. And also, I better not forget to return max offset from this function get view offset for snack bar. So now the last thing that we need to do is to go to the activity main XML file and we want to add a custom behavior for this floating action button. So app layout behavior and we want to specify the full name of the class which we have just created, the shrink behavior. In this case, it's com.resocoder.behavior.shrinkbehavior. All right, and now let's test it. So here we are inside the behavior tutorial app and when we click on the floating action button, it's going to shrink and not move upwards. It's gonna work even when I dismiss the snack bar manually. It's just not going to be really nice of an animation, but that just happens to be the way that Android handles it. When I remove this line from this XML code and build this app again, the floating action button is going to move up as usual. So let's put this line back in here. All right, and that's it for this tutorial. If you want to get the code, click on the link in the video description, which is going to take you to resocoder.com. If this tutorial helps you with creating a custom behavior for your views, give this video a like and also share it. If you don't want to miss more tutorials like this, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you aren't going to miss any of my new videos. If you have anything to say, leave a comment, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.